On May the 2nd, 2011, close to 300 people came to Eichler's Packhus at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Copenhagen to participate in Danita Development Days. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, welcome to Danita Development Days 2011. Under the heading Africa's Resources, Lions on the Move, the first day addressed several issues. The Minister of Energy from Ghana, Honorable Joe Oteng Ajay, explained how Ghana's government is handling its newfound oil and the governance of this resource. Mr. Machuli Nkubi, Chief Economist at the African Development Bank, addressed the myths and realities of Africa's development, including the new middle class. Chief Economist for the African Region at the World Bank, Mr. Shanta Devarajan, focused his presentation on the dynamics of the informal sector. For too long we've been focusing on the formal sector, but the formal sector is only about 5 to 10 percent of the labor force. Uh, my presentation was about competitiveness and employment, which I think are the two biggest challenges in Africa. Although Africa's had quite a lot of growth, they haven't been creating productive jobs at a sufficiently rapid pace to absorb the 7 to 10 million young people entering the labor force every year. But I was trying to show some success stories where African governments have managed to increase employment and increase competitiveness. Following Mr. Nkubi's presentation, the participants were asked to fill out a reflection card to start the debate. What did you write on your reflection card this morning? Uh, I wrote uh, uh, the importance of infrastructure development in Africa uh, because I believe that that's a key uh, area where Africa is lacking. From the morning lecture, I wrote that it was really interesting to hear about the new African uh, middle class. What do you see as the biggest challenge for Africa in the future? We are dealing with uh, uh, population increase, urbanization, uh, but we lack this infrastructure in urban areas. <laughs> oh, Africa's biggest challenge. I mean, now with my uh, new inspiration from uh, listening to the Minister of Energy from Ghana, I think it's a balance between these uh, oil industry uh, companies coming in and in the national state and then the civil society as such, the balance between those. That's actually what I'm here for. One of the keynote speakers of the day was Dr. Paul Collier, professor of economics at Oxford University. He had flown in to give a lecture on his book, The Plundered Planet, which looks at ways to ensure that the value of Africa's resources goes to the African people. So the key point is that over the next decade, Africa is going to have a huge opportunity. The value of the natural resources that will come out of Africa is going to be enough to transform Africa. The challenge is to try and make sure that the sad history of plunder of Africa's natural resources isn't repeated. Um, Africa should use its resources, not preserve them. So that's one debate. And, and who's responsible for making that happen? Is it Africa itself? Of or? course, who else? Uh, Africa is in the hands of Africans, as it should be. According to Gloria Somulike, Member of Parliament in Botswana, Africa's biggest challenge in the future will be to generate wealth. You see, Africa is a rich continent in terms of um, natural resources, but transforming that into job opportunities, transforming that into a higher standard of living for our people remains uh, one of the key challenges that uh, we are facing. But we are working on it and we have to continue feeling optimistic and being inspired.